Hello my dear students in the previous uh, video lectures we have discussed the need 2023 question paper and solve the question related to your class 12th syllabus now in this video we will discuss the need 2022 paper uh, we will solve each and every concept related to your class 12 curriculum and uh, discuss the concept behind that questions okay now we will uh, understand different types of tips and tricks which can easily crack the uh, need question paper the first question the first question is related to electrostatics you can see two hollow conducting spheres of radius r1 and r2 we are provided with two hollow spheres one is having radius r1 and another is r2 so if you want to draw the uh, diagram we can easily draw this diagram in this pattern two hollow spheres one of radius r1 and another is r2 and provided that r1 is greater than r2 so we can say the inner one is r2 and the outer one is r1 so easily we can differentiate that r1 is greater than r2 have equal charges though they both have uh, equal charges we can see uh, it, it has q charge and this sphere is also has q charge what will be the potential we have to predict the uh, value of potential according to this condition uh, it will uh, can it be more than on a sphere a smaller sphere it is equal on both the spheres dependent on the material on the bigger surface so the correct answer is it will be more on smaller space why this happen because we know the formula for potential is v is equal to 1 upon 4 pi e naught q upon r the simplified formula is v is equal to k q upon r when we have to calculate the potential we are using simple formula k q upon r k is coulomb constant or electricity constant the value of k is 1 upon 4 pi e naught as we all know 1 upon 4 pi e naught is a constant value and according to questions the charge is also same so uh, for comparison we are not using the same quantities so we eliminate the uh, constant and the same charge so the relation between potential and the distance is v is proportional to 1 upon r this simply says if the value of r is greater then the potential will be smaller so we have to calculate the value of potential we can simply say the potential will be more on a smaller sphere because the smaller sphere is having a small radius hence its potential will be greater this is the simply concept behind this logic okay uh, this is question is from your electrostatic section now we proceed to the next question the next question is related to semiconductor as we all know semiconductor is a combination of p type and n type semiconductor we are provided with some of the diagrams okay first condition second condition third condition in the given circuits abc the potential drop across the two pn junction are equal we have to calculate the potential drop we are provided with pn junction pn junction pn junction pn junction now the difference between the three diagrams is their biasing there are two types of biasing as we all know forward biasing and reverse biasing forward biasing and reverse biasing forward means to connect positive to positive or we can say negative to negative when we connect same polarity that is it is a kind of forward biasing positive connected to positive and the negative is connected to negative similarly reverse biasing means positive is connected to negative and negative is connected to positive so we have to just identify which type of connections are there so question is the potential drop across the two pn junction are equal in so we can easily see see both diagram a and c a and c have equal potential okay so how we predict the polarity and the position uh, we discuss first diagram first first diagram p is connected to positive and n is connected to negative that is in forward biasing okay now uh, the uh, next connection this this is connection in also similar to this type of connection in this connection what we have provided positive is connected to positive that is forward biasing but this connection is what type of biasing reverse biasing because the positive is connected to negative terminal and the third is negative is connected to negative positive is connected to connect this is kind of forward biasing and this is also kind of forward biasing so you can see in all the diagram a b c the diagram a and c have 
same condition both are forward both are forward so they will offer equal resistance when they are biased in same manner so the question is about uh, the potential drop when we are they are having connected in same biasing then the potential drop will be same okay so by this observation of figure we can easily predict the type of polarity and the type of biasing of diode okay now we'll move to the next question the next question is related to ray optics what the question is a biconvex lens has a radius radii of curvature 20 cm each we should know the biconvex lens is a kind of double convex lens which have two radius and the values of both is 20 cm what is the value 20 cm according to question the radius of curvature r1 and r2 is equal to 20 cm we can convert uh, centimeter to meter that is equal to 0.2 meter okay now if the refractive index of the material of the lens is 1.5 calculate the power of the lens so we can use the lens maker formula lens maker formula is nothing but it is 1 upon f uh, is equal to mu minus 1 upon 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 okay this is our lens maker formula and we know the relation between power and focal length power is equal to 1 upon focal length so actually the value of 1 upon f denotes the value of of power so we can easily calculate the power now we are provided with the refractive index 1.5 that is equal to 3 by 2 now r1 and r2 are the two radius of curvature in double convex lens we know one is positive and other is negative one is for the right side and one is for the left side that's why r1 is positive 20 centimeter and r2 is negative 20 centimeter okay by just putting the values in the formula uh, mu we can put 3 by 2 minus 1 1 upon r1 1 upon r2 we can easily get the power as plus 5d where d denote the diopter the correct answer is option number b diopter is the power of lens is a unit of power of a lens lens power is always measured in diopter okay power is equal to 1 upon focal length if the focal length is measured in meter and if the focal length is in centimeter then we can say 100 upon f when the focal length is in which condition centimeter okay this is all about this question now we move to the next question the next question is related to solenoid okay we are provided with a long solenoid of radius 1 mm and number of turns is 1000 turns per mm if one ampere current is flowing in the solenoid the magnetic field stands at the center of the solenoid as we all know what is solenoid we know the solenoid is a kind of this type of structure Solenoid is a kind of this type of structure when we move a wire in the form of circular turns and this type of structure is called solenoid and we have to calculate the value of magnetic field the formula for magnetic field of a solenoid is B is equal to mu naught Ni where mu naught is called mu naught is called the permeability of the medium there are two types of permeability relative and absolute this is kind of absolute permittivity permeability now small n is the number of turns per unit length so we can easily write n is equal to capital n upon l and the is small i denote the current now the value of mu naught is fixed that is 4 pi to 10 to power minus 7 the value of small n is uh, capital N upon L. Capital N is given 100 upon length. Length is 1 meter that we have to convert into meter that is equal to 10 raise to power minus 3 and the current is 1 ampere. By simply putting the values and calculating for B we get the magnetic field at 12.56 into 10 to the power minus 2 Tesla that is the required unit of magnetic field. This is simply the application of formula of uh, magnetic field of solenoid. Okay. Now we will move to the next question the next question is related to the energies of an electron let the t1 and t2 be the energy of electron in the first and second excited state of hydrogen atom as we all know we have discussed in the lectures the, the hydrogen atom have first second third orbit the uh, energy of first orbit be t1 and the energy of second orbit be t2 uh, according to the Bohr's model of an uh, atom the ratio of t1 upon t2 so we simply have to calculate the ratios of energy okay we simply have to calculate the ratios of energy okay for energy 
वी आर प्रोवाइडेड विद इन सिंपल फॉर्मूला एनर्जी ऑफ एंथ ऑर्बिट इज इक्वल टू माइनस थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स अपॉन एन स्क्वायर माइनस थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स अपॉन एन स्क्वायर एंड वी आर प्रोडेड विद एडिशनल टर्म्स ऑफ जेड स्क्वायर For hydrogen, generally we are using that is equal to one. So the formula reduces to minus 13.6 upon n square, where n is orbit number. For first orbit we put n equal to one. For second we put n equal to two. In question, energy denoted by T1 and T2, where T1 is the energy of first orbit and T2 is the energy of second orbit. Now T1 is the energy of first and second excited. Now first excited state means n is equal to two. Are you getting my point? First state is the uh, first state is the ground state, and then first excited state, second excited state, third excited state. Okay, so ground state for ground state we are using n equal to one. We are using n equal to one for first excited state. We are using n equal to two. For second excited state, we are using n equal to three, and for third excited state, we are using n equal to four. So in the question, it is first excited state. For first excited state, we use n equal to two. Putting the formula, uh, uh, putting the values n in the formula, n equal to two, we get this energy as first excited state. For second excited state, we put n equal to three and calculate the energy. Now we have to calculate the ratio of uh, first excited state energy to second. We just divide the Both the values we get nine is to four. That is the required option number third. In this type of question, we just have to observe which type of excited state is this, and we have to understand the pattern of energy state. For ground state, we are using n equal to one. For first excited state, n equal to two. For second excited state, we are equal to n equal to three, and this is continuous. Okay. so if other than uh, first and second if the other states uh, we can easily calculate by just replacing the values of n now moving to the next question the next question is also related to ray optics the question says a light ray falls on the glass surface of refractor index root 3 at an angle of 60 degree the angle between the refracted and the reflected rays okay we just have to calculate between the uh, angle of uh, angle between reflection and refraction so this is the required diagram uh, there is an interface above that the medium is air and uh, below that is glass okay a light ray incident and at an angle of 60 degree and uh, we have to calculate the value of reflected and refracted ray so the refractive index of the glass is given as mu is equal to root 3 uh, this question is actually related to brewster law so brewster law simply says when a light incident at an interface then it gets uh, it is also related to polarization in brewster law it get partially reflect and it gets partially refract okay so the concept behind is, is this this is our reflected ray this is our this is our reflected ray this is reflected and this is refracted and the angle between both the reflection and refraction that is equal to what value what value that is equal to 90 degree we have used the concept from polarization brewster law now uh, uh, this can be calculated by two methods method 1 and method 2 method 1 is by snell's law why we are using snell's law because when light travel from one medium to second medium there is refraction of light when it is in same medium it is reflection of light but it is uh, uh, from air to glass the medium changes that we are using the concept of refraction and by using snell's law now simply the snell's law is sin i upon sin is r i is equal to mu you know uh, the formula for snell's law is sin of incidence angle upon sin of refraction angle that is equal to a constant that, that is known as refractive index putting the value of i and refractive index at root 3 we can calculate sin r as equal to 1 by 2 and we know the sin r is equal to 1 by 2 at the angle of 30 degree that is the angle between reflected and refracted ray okay so this you have calculated r r is angle of refraction by snell's law this they have calculated r that is angle of refraction now if this is angle of refraction so this is angle uh, 60 why this is 60 angle of incidence is angle is equal to angle of reflection this is 60 this is 30 the remaining angle is 90 degree the answer is 90 degree so when we are solving this type of problem by snell's law we are just calculating the value of r 
ओके एंड बाय पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ आर इन डायग्राम वी कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ रिफ्लेक्टेड एंड रिफ्लेक्टेड एज 90 डिग्री दिस इज द वन ऑफ द मेथड फॉर दिस टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम बट सेकंड मेथड इज बाय यूजिंग द कांसेप्ट ऑफ ब्रेवेस्टर लॉ ब्रेवेस्टर एंगल दैट इज म्यू इज इक्वल टू tan ऑफ ip एंड वी आर प्रोवाइडेड दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ म्यू इज रूट 3 देन tan ip इज इक्वल टू रूट 3 ip वी गेट एंगल इक्वल टू 60 डिग्री वी आर पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ 60 डिग्री एंड दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी डायरेक्टली सॉल्व विदाउट मेथड 1 एंड मेथड 2 द थर्ड मेथड इज मेथड 3 बाय डायरेक्ट ऑब्जर्वेशन by how it can be solved by direct observation if the angle of incidence is 60 degree so according to the laws of refraction angle of refraction also must be equal to 60 degree okay this is uh, in reflected ray and this is refracted ray and according to bravestor law the angle between the both is always equal to 90 degree this is the direct method without using this method 1 and method 2 we can easily calculate by just observation if you are if you are having the knowledge of polarization and bravestor law now moving to the next question the next question is related to resistance we are provided with two resistance first value is 100 and other is 200 ohm which are connected in parallel in electric circuit the ratio of thermal energy developed in 100 ohm to the 200 ohm is given by we are provided with two resistance first is 100 and other is 200 okay both the resistance are in parallel okay the voltage is not given we know for parallel the voltage is always same so we are the v volt across this and v volt across this we have to calculate because in parallel circuit voltage is always same this is also v volt this is also v volt we have to calculate the power of uh, value of power of the thermal energy we know the formula for the power is v square upon r because the both the resistance are connected in parallel and parallel circuit we are having same voltage so this will eliminate the result will uh, depend only on the inverse value of resistance okay so the power will depend upon the inverse value of resistance so p1 upon p2 can be written as r2 upon r1 putting the values of r1 as 200 and r1 as 100 we get 2 is to 1 that is the required value of thermal energy or the power that is our option number first 2 is to one okay these are some of the tricky sort of question in which they have asked about energy uh, we have calculated the power power is kind of, uh, easily uh, calculation of power gives us the ratio of energy okay so moving to the next part the next part is related to the de broglie wavelength okay the graph shows the variation of the de broglie wavelength lambda of a particle and its associated momentum okay so this is simply the graph related to direct formula lambda is equal to h upon p level lambda is known as the de broglie wavelength h is planck constant and p is the momentum okay so the graph is between lambda and p okay as we all know uh, the h is a kind of constant h is a kind of constant so the relation between lambda and p is equal to, is always a inverse relation will be in always an inverse relation that is our required option number third okay this is one of the formula for uh, wavelength we can write more formulas based on the above formula just putting the values of p lambda is equal to we get h upon mv okay we get lambda is equal to h upon mv this is the second formula okay we can write the third formula as lambda is equal to h upon under root 2m ke this is the third formula for wavelength okay this is formula number 1 this is formula number 2 and this is formula number 3 okay the third relation relate the kinetic energy with wavelength okay if uh, we just have put the values of momentum we know momentum is equal to root 2m kinetic into kinetic energy this is the required value of wavelength three questions can be asked about this question uh, in the neat 2022 the question is related to formula number 1 in the upcoming examination it can be related to formula number 2 and formula number 3 okay moving to the next question the next question is related to magnetic field uh, a square loop of side 1 ammeter and resistance 1 ohm is placed in a magnetic field of 0.5 tesla okay 
if the plane of the loop is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field the magnetic flux we have to calculate the value of magnetic flux okay we have to calculate the value of magnetic flux we are provided with b b is given as 0.5 tesla the value of magnetic flux is phi is equal to ba phi is equal to ba cos theta phi a ba cos theta now uh, the condition is if the plane of the loop is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field this plane word is game changer in this question we in this type of question we just have to see okay, that angle theta must be between normal the angle between theta must be with normal okay if it is not with the normal that in this type of case we have to convert so the angle with the plane is uh, angle with the plane is 90 degree angle with the plane is 90 degree we have to calculate the angle with the normal so simply we can calculate 90 minus theta so we are provided with 90 minus 90 that is equal to 0 degree so uh, this type of question can be reversed uh, in another pattern if the angle of plane uh, in, in replacement of plane it is given with normal okay so angle theta should always be normal this is the key point for this type of questions okay if it is not with normal then we have to convert it with normal by simply subtracting it from 90 degree so 90 minus 90 is 0 degree so we get cos of 0 degree and we know cos of 0 degree is always equal to 1 b is given 0 0.5 area we can easily calculate it is a square loop square is equal to side square 1 into 1 square 1 so the answer is 0 0.5 weber that is the option number first and the key point behind this type of question we just have to see uh, angle is with which condition if it is with it normal then it is okay and if it is not with normal then we have to convert the angle to normal angle by just simply subtracting it from 90 degree okay if it is not perpendicular it is 30 degree then angle comes out to be 90 minus 30 that is equal to 60 degree then we have to put cos of 60 degree okay moving to the next question okay this is the simple question based on the dimension of m l is l t key power minus 2 a raised to power minus 2 belongs to this is the dimension of magnetic permeability okay there are two types of concept permittivity and permeability as we all know magnetic permeability is denoted by mu and the formula for mu is mu naught into mu r where mu naught is absolute permittivity absolute permittivity and mu r is relative r stands for relative permittivity absolute permittivity has a constant value and that constant value is 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7 its name also suggests absolute means fixed value and the fixed value is 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7 and the value of relative permittivity relative means related to medium it is always dependent on medium in the dimensional analysis we have discussed the concept of magnetic permeability that comes out to be this value okay moving to the next question the next question is also uh, related to uh, photoelectric effect the question is when to monochromatic light of frequency what does monochromatic means mono means single chrome means color single colored source and sodium vapor lamp are the practical examples of monochromatic sources of light uh, have frequ uh, when two monochromatic of lights of frequency new and new by two first frequency is new and other frequencies new by two are incident on the photoelectric metal the stopping potential comes out to be vs by two and vs what is stopping potential its name suggests it's the potential uh, the negative potential which stops the photoelectric current is called stopping potential the negative potential which stops the photoelectric current is called stopping potential respectively the threshold frequency for the battle okay so the question simply says when the frequency is new the stopping potel potential is vs upon 2 now if the uh, frequency is new by 2 the stopping potential is vs so we have to calculate the threshold frequency that is nu naught now by using the equation of the relation e uh, v is equal to h nu minus phi 
we know phi is equal to work function e v is equal to h nu phi we put in the value of h nu naught nu naught or nu th is called known as the threshold frequency now by just putting the values and solving we can get uh, uh, in, in this question uh, the threshold frequency is asked when we are provided with the frequency and stopping potential so there is not kind of any uh, direct relation between these so we can predict the result on the basis of this given data so this is actually a question related to data incorrectness okay if the data are correct we can simply put the equation and we can get the answer the equation is simply it is nothing uh, and hard task it is simply uh, e v s is equal to h nu minus nu naught where e v s is the work done we can say of the kinetic energy and h is the Planck constant nu is the frequency and nu naught is the stopping potential so we can easily relate okay now moving to the next question if in half wave rectification if the input frequency is 60 hertz then the output frequency will be okay we have discussed the rectifier means it is a circuit for conversion of ac to dc rectifier simply means circuit for the conversion of ac into dc there can be two kind of rectifier half wave and full wave rectifier okay now uh, the input frequency is 60 hertz what is the output frequency we know in half wave rectification circuit the frequency it is remains the same remains the same means the input frequency is equal to output frequency if the input frequency is 60 then output frequency must be equal to 60 okay these are the simple concept related to topic when you study the topic when you study the half wave rectifier circuit in special conditions it is written frequency does not change it that means input frequency must be equal to output frequency now moving to the next question the next question is related to the wavelength of different types of electromagnetic waves you have discussed the topic of electromagnetic spectrum in which different types of EM waves are given and the corresponding wavelength and frequencies are given along with their uses and the sources of generation okay so we just have to match the relation uh, by this uh, observation you can just have a uh, look at the table we, we get uh, radio waves have the wavelength of 10 raised to power 2 microwave have the ten, wavelength of 10 raised to power minus 2 and infrared have the radiations of this and rex rays this type of the answer is there okay by just having look at the table you can uh, easily learn the values for wavelength and uh, this is important question for a board examination also so you have to learn the table of, of wavelength and frequency and then special cases in the uses okay now this is all about the lectures we have discussed in today's uh, uh, class this is all the slides are related to a NEET 2022 paper and you have seen we have discussed the topics related to a class 12 examination uh, none of the question were tricky or we can say in hard manner these are all formula related questions or concept related questions so when you are uh, trying to study when you are studying try to cover each and all uh, topic thoroughly each topic should be thoroughly covered that means it should include the definition of the topic that should include the working principle and the formula behind the concept so majority of the questions are directly formula based in the coming lectures we will discuss some more questions from the need paper uh, for today thank you very much thank you